so the rls algorithm we have seen here so recursive least squares algorithm with the introduction of the least squares error instead of the mean square error the minimization if we are going to do we get this particular rls algorithm and the version we have seen performing better if and only if it is exponentially weighted here so simply the rls algorithm is minimizing the exponentially weighted least square error that we have seen in the previous video here now when we have a growing window rls algorithm for example in this case lambda is equal to 1 so each of the squared errors are equally weighted whereas with the exponentially weighted rls algorithm when the lambda is less than 1 the squared errors will become less important for the values of i that are small as compared to small n so in both of these cases the rls algorithm has infinite memory in the sense that all of the data beginning from the time in general n is equal to 0 will affect the values of the coefficients denoted by w suffix n now in some of the applications there it is a requirement that this thing may not be at all a desirable here that is why this becomes a redundant thing so unnecessarily it will be the computational efficiency reduction here so for example as in this particular chapter for the design of the adaptive filters our focus is on the non stationary aspects here for a non stationary process under consideration whose statistics are changing very rapidly with respect to the changes in to a time a small value of lambda will be necessary in order to track the process here now alternatively however is to minimize the sum of the squares of the error signal e of i over the finite window and here we denote uh, the epsilon suffix l of n that is equal to the summation i is equal to n minus capital l up to small n for the mod square of e of i here so as this will make it more easy for tracking the non stationary process here the use of a finite window will allow for any of the data outliers to be forgotten after a finite number of iterations here so let us follow the same steps that we have used in the previous topic to derive the deterministic normal equations for minimizing the exponentially weighted square error here so here we require the filter coefficients denoted by w sub x n that minimize this epsilon sub x l of n that we have represented with the equation number 1 and these are found to be the solutions of the equations denoted with the help of the autocorrelation matrix capital r sub x x of n multiplied by w sub x n the filter coefficients weight that is equal to the cross correlation representation small r sub x dx of n so in this representation the autocorrelation matrix representation capital r sub x x of n is equal to the summation i is equal to n minus capital l to small n for the multiplication of the complex conjugate of x of i with the transpose of x of i and the cross correlation representation is done by r sub x dx of n that is equal to the summation i is equal to n minus capital l up to small n for the multiplication of desired signal d of i with the complex conjugate of x of i here now making the use of a procedure that is very similar to that we have used for derivation of the growing window rls algorithm in the previous topic here a sliding window rls algorithm may be developed here so this is our current topic sliding window rls here and this is with the computational complexity of the order of p square operations and the sliding window rls algorithm consists of the two important steps here so let us have the first step 
in the first step given the solution denoted w sub x n minus 1 to the earlier representation at the time n minus 1 with the new data value x of n the weight vector denoted here it is w sub x n and over the head of w sub x n there it is a tilde which is found that the minimization of the error we have epsilon sub x l plus 1 of n is equal to the summation i is equal to n minus capital L minus 1 up to small n for the mod square of p of i and the second step is the weight vector w sub x n that minimizes the epsilon sub x l of n is then further determined by discarding the last data point x of n minus capital L minus 1 here. So as we have these two steps here, in the first step we determine the vector w sub x n tilde here. The tilde is provided over the head here and this is supposed to minimize the error that results from the addition of one additional data value here. So therefore we can have the use of the growing window RLS algorithm for determination of the WN tilde from the WN minus 1. So this will be with the help of the equation we have G of N plus 1 the gain the representation here equal to 1 upon 1 plus X of N transpose multiplied to capital P of N minus 1 into X of N and this ratio is multiplied to p of n minus 1 into the complex conjugate of x of n here. So the notations of the capital P and the transpose of x of n and all these are the same that we have made used in the previous video. So therefore here we get the tilde w sub x n is equal to w sub x n minus 1 added by g of n multiplied to the square bracket that has d of n minus w sub x n multiplied to the complex conjugate of x of n. So this way we obtain the tilde of capital P of n that is equal to capital P of n minus 1 minus g of n multiplied to the transpose of x of n into capital P of n minus 1 here. So we know the capital P of n from the previous video and now here it is the tilde of capital P of n. So this is inverse of the matrix representation for the tilde of the autocorrelation matrix form. So we have capital Rx of n tilde here. This is equal to the summation k is equal to n minus capital L minus 1 up to small n for the multiplication of complex conjugate of x of k with the transpose of x of k. So this is based on the capital L plus 2 data values and that the tilde w sub x n is the solution to the equation here we have the rx of n tilde into w n tilde it will be equal to tilde of the cross correlation r sub x dx of n. So the tilde of r sub x dx of n is basically the summation k is equal to small n minus capital L minus 1 up to n plus 1 for d of k multiplied with the complex conjugate of x of k here. So this was a discussion for executing the step number 1 that is required to have implementation of this particular type of the RLS algorithm here that is for the sliding window RLS here. Now we have the second step as well. In the second step for the recursion purpose here the last data point that we have x of n minus capital L minus 1 is discarded to have restoration of capital L plus 1 point window and this is accomplished with a slight modification to the growing window RLS algorithm and therefore we start with the matrix update equation. So the autocorrelation matrix update equation is provided capital R of n is equal to the tilde of R of n minus the complex conjugate of x of n minus capital L 
multiply to the transpose of x of n minus capital L minus 1 and the update of the cross correlation representation is also required that is provided as small r sub x dx of n that is equal to the tilde of r sub x dx of n minus d of n minus capital L minus 1 into the complex conjugate of n minus capital L minus 1. At last making the use of the matrix steps here we are going to summarize the equations that describe the sliding window RLS algorithm here. So the update equations are given as the tilde of g of n plus 1 that is equal to 1 upon 1 minus transpose of x of n minus capital L minus 1 multiplied to the tilde of capital P of n multiplied further to the complex conjugate of x of n minus L minus 1 and this ratio is further multiplied to the tilde of P of n and further multiplied to the complex conjugate of x of n minus L minus 1 here whereas we have the equation for the weight so w sub x n is equal to the tilde of w sub x n minus the tilde of g of n multiplied to the square bracket that has the desired signal representation d of n minus capital L minus 1 minus the tilde of w sub x n multiplied to the complex conjugate of x of n minus L minus 1 here and finally capital P of n is equal to the tilde of capital P of n added by the tilde of g of n further multiplied to the transpose of x of n minus capital L minus 1 finally multiplied to the tilde of P of n here. So these were the equations those complete the derivation part for the sliding window RLS algorithm here. Now if we compare the sliding window RLS algorithm to the earlier topic that we have seen for exponentially weighted RLS algorithm, the difference can be noted that for the current topic sliding window RLS algorithm, there it is a requirement of twice the number of multiplications and additions and additionally it also requires that small p plus capital L values for the input signal x of n is stored here. So this was the discussion with respect to the topic sliding window RLS algorithm here.